hello we will continue our normal editing and as I mentioned before this is not something cryptic this is not something mystical this is something of just creating as I call them patches or sections throughout the face that will be compatible with the topology that we want to represent either in shadows or in light and that's why we have created all of these arrows so that you'll know exactly where to point your normals at this direction that's why it's set on green and you can see the green section for the face right here this one is set in yellow so you can see the entire section that is going to be yellow okay and this section right here in the mouth it's uh, cyan but you can get the idea now we previously expressed that these arrow colors are not randomic they are based upon the uh, let me see right here the axis that they do represent for example in this case these are the X so in this case our nose <laughs> that I have uh, put in a different color should be represented with the red itself so let me see if I can switch this on the fly yep that's it red so now we know that all red pointings arrows the red pointing arrows are going to be the X axis right there and maybe I'm doing this in the oh, okay this is yeah what happened guys is that <laughs> my previous file somehow got jammed but I lost uh, the, the details so I'm going to be using let me see if this works so I'm going to be using this new file to complete this exercise I wonder why this is oh okay I see this has two materials here we go so orange is not orange really it should be blue yep that's much better and I just did this as a yellow so that it will be different but in reality if we are looking forward this should be uh, green and this will be <laughs> a mix between um, forward which is green and red this should be a mix but I just wanted to show you that all of this different that all of these different sections in the face are going to be manipulated so that you can get your your uh, facial normals in place okay the second element that we need to make sure that it's already created it's this 45 degree light if we see it from the top we can see this 45 degree um, rotation so that we get our shadows exactly from this side now if you are somewhat somebody who would like to represent the shadows from the other side it's okay it doesn't matter because we are doing this only for the half of the face so that means whatever we create here is going to be mirrored onto the other side automatically this is how you should start your process before um, writing or before creating the shape keys I have created the shape keys beforehand because I want to show you how this will affect whatever you're doing right now because ultimately we want to translate all of these normals to the new or to the previous phase okay so this is like our mask to be edited so that we can copy these normals once they are finished into our final um, character so with all of that said let's start so we have this green section we have this yellow section we have this purple section we have this um, neutral color section we also have this section around the nose and uh, over the eyes but the transitional we can call it sections between this this region and this region are going to have split normals and why do we want to do why do we want to place split normals between this region and this region because many people have reported or many people has asked why do we uh, have to bear with snapping shadows like the shadow is going here and all of a sudden BAM it clicks over here and BAM it clicks over there okay so to avoid that we need to create transitionary zones so that means that the the shadow is not going to snap from this yellow region to this green region and therefore we need a transitional region over here now of course this modeling this model has different um, have different regions where the topology does not match like for example here we should have something like a mask the mask should should connect to all of these triangles as well 
over here on the nose we also should have a continuous you know line cut all the way back here so we can get that but don't worry for now let's um, concentrate first of all on how you should orient your normals later on we will concentrate ourselves in the topology okay let's just take this one step at a time so that you will not get confused because all of these things play together as a matter of fact all of these factors the light the um, in this case the shadows the cube size cascade size uh, the shader itself the topology the normals all of that play all together it's like driving a car you know like you need to to put your 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 feet and hands in coordination with the machinery of the car like switching gears and all of that but let's just take one step at a time and in this occasion we're going to only address the normal the normal editing so i'm going to start by saying that you need you will need for this the b npr abnormal add-on so let me just open this wide Uh, this is going to be an uncut video. I'm sorry, I will not be able to edit it because I really want you to understand the thought process behind all of this. So first of all, I'm going to target my son and make it unselectable. You need to listen to the th thought process of, of this, okay? So thank you very much if you're willing to go this extra mile to to understand all of the principles for this. Okay, so we have two basic approaches. Number one, let me just hide the, the arrows. Two basic approaches. There are people, what what happened here? Oh, okay, so just hide all of them. Here we go. So there are people who prefer to do this starting um, on the model by copying a low polygonal face we have a low polygonal face right here let me show you the wireframes okay but once you do this you kind of get the same snapping transition from this to this to this okay why because we have very sharp angles after all that's what we wanted but if right now we translate the normals from this low polygonal face to our mask we're going to get bad results. I will be showing you all of that later on in the video. So then you say, all right, so let's let's do it uh, with a more, with a high polygonal mask in the same way. And yes, you will get a softer transition for your lights and shadows using more details for vertices so that more ver vertices get transmitted to your original face. And that is great, except that this topology does not resemble the topology that we're using in our original head. And therefore, you will also get artifacts and it will not work. So our general aim here, and I'm going to be placing uh, a reference uh, face at the top left of the corner so you can see where we're starting and where we're going. So the first thing that we need to take care of is that we make sure that we're only working on the half of the face. So I'm going to be starting with a reset normals um, for all of this. So I'm going to press 1 to filter out. You can see right here the select mode, the vertex select mode A. Alt N, which is the menu for the normals. This um, workflow has been described on different videos of mine. Please, if you need more details about all of these, all of these tools and what they do and how to manage them, you should need to check my previous series uh, videos. Some of them are on YouTube and some of them are on Gumroad, but the most updated version it's on Wingfox. So anyways, let's go to average, I'm sorry, um, reset vectors, here we go. So all of the normals will be reset. And let me just place this back to basis so we can work with the actual uh, model. So this is easy right now because you should define your areas your facial areas in your model as well so as you can see all of this transi transitional area even the nose does not have even the mouth does not have um, something that we can uh, call it in a different color or identify it in a different color even here you can see that the, the cut is going to be harsh but 
for now this is not important to me so I would like to paint all of this um, in the same way that I did over here but we're going to be adjusting these zones individually so you can understand that you can correct everything all at once or correct one by one so let's start with the easier phase which is going to be this one so I'm going to press 3 and then I'm going to be selecting all of this um, region right here again this is not going to be an edited video this is a one um, single playback because I don't want you to miss any thought process okay I know there are five minute videos but where have you where have you but where have those videos taken you to I don't think they have um, been much useful because I have not seen the um, because there is so much that it's been cut and you really need to understand what's going on behind curtains and this is why it's imperative that you learn how to make your topology flow your cuts your your triangles your squares everything is in in that position so you can see that my front zone has upwards normals all the way to the front normals and upwards normals again so if my light is coming this way like I mentioned in the other video and these normals are pointing that way it's most likely that the light is always going to have these zones lit and why do we want to do that because we want to flatten as much as we can the surface okay even though it, it's a bumpy surface even though it's a it's a nice flowing topology we want to make sure that the light hits this entire area as flatly as possible with less shadows with less bumpiness that's how we um, create bumpy I'm, I'm sorry that's how we create flat flat um, appearances so just for the sake of the example and the demonstration I'm going to be selecting this zone then I'm going to start the normal editor this will get you into a um, normal picking session in this case you can see that my mirror has been active my mirror modifier is active right now so we're going to be working with this active so anyways I'm going to be switching to number three for the left side I'm sorry right side of this and then I'm going to tell it please align all of these normals to the y axis to the negative y this is positive y this is negative y over here to the left so negative y it's going to be front so as you can see all of these normals have been pointing to the front now you can see the gizmo right here okay and if you press t you're going to get your your tools back but there is a single problem that your gizmo is overlaying on top of the current transforming gizmos in Blender so in order to see this clearly you need to switch the overlays off and with that you finally have the abnormal gizmo the only one that you're going to need to modify this so I'm going to be moving this as you can see from the, the front totally front to some degrees up if I undo this you can go back now you have a little square here a little square tool that will only appear if you overlay again and if you check right here this is going to indicate the colors that you're going to be working in in my case as you can see I will be rotating the vectors in the red axis which is X and this checkbox up here will allow you to move the axis depending on the um, setting that you choose I will be rotating it at one degree will I be rotating it at a five degree or do I need to use a 10 degree increment or decreasing of the rotation so in my case I'm going to be using just the five degree increment and with this button you can rotate in the positive X and with this button you will rotate in the negative X since we already know that we have uh, rolled this up let's try positive and that's rolling down so let's undo ctrl Z whoops this is the second time that I undo so that's why all of the vectors reset so let's start again
This is important because again, it will show you how to control the tool and the expected behaviors. So again, we're going to align this to the negative Y, negative Y, very good. Now we're going to go, we're, we're going to come here. I, I don't know if you can see it, there's a little box there. And whenever you fly through or you hoover, you can see that. Okay, so now we know it's not positive, but negative X. So negative X in uh, five degree increment, negative X, and that's what we want. Okay, negative five. And you may ask, what if I type this directly? Yes, you can. If you press R, X, and let's say uh, minus 15. Whoops, no, it did not. Well, in normal Blender tools, you can do that. You can type and translate every single normal vertex that you have selected, and you can do transformations as you would in the regular objects. But I see that AB normal does not have it. Anyway, so now you know how to manipulate this. Okay, so that was easy. Let's continue. So what we want is a sharp defining um, uh, dark section down here. So I'm going to select with the add-on setting, set settings to confirm changes. And now we have all of those normals applied. And I would really really recommend you because this is how I lost my last work and that's why I'm redoing this entire video again I would really recommend that whenever you're done with a section not the entire face with a section you approve you qualify you confirm the changes on that section otherwise you will get reset accidentally by pressing escape by pressing tab any other of those keys that we're so used to pressing by accident and you will lose everything you have done in your model so make sure that whenever you're changing one of your sections just confirm the changes right away and then enter the uh, AB normal settings again the AB normal editor again so that's nice let's go with this section over here now in AB normal I'm going to press alt A and that will unselect everything in AB normal you select you normally select with the right mouse button okay not do not use the left mouse like everything in the interface is set to i don't know why this is but anyways you can use the left mouse i'm sorry the right mouse button and everything else it's um, the, the normal workflow so let me just switch off this again the overlays switch off the overlays just like i mentioned before my mouse is glitching so i'm pressing shift and right mouse click shift and right mouse click shift and right mouse click now if your gizmo is over one of the vertex points too bad too of tough luck you're not going to be able to select it you'll need to rotate your view and select it uh, in another way so what if i want to deselect again shift click shift uh, right mouse click and then you'll select it now, i'm going to stop here because this is where the section stops so let's uh, bring back our overlays and I want this section, this section, all the way up until this section to um, make my normals go straight down. We want to modify this straight down. So as you can see, this is doing this. And why do we want to change this? Because when the light hits from below up, this is going to be half lit and we don't want that we want to be either full lit fully lit when the light uh, goes from the down to top and we want to have a full shadow when the light is from top to bottom so on the side view I'm going to be setting this to negative Z if you see this this is positive Z and down here it's going to be uh, negative Z so I'm going to align the normals directly to the axis negative z and that will allow us to see the normals go down immediately you have seen that we already have a shadow region there you cannot entirely see it because we have this region with a cluster color so we're going to change that later on but okay so that has been edited great let's confirm the changes please don't forget to to apply that okay so now we need to go to this region and this is important because it's going to be average with all of these other 
sections that we have right here but basically this region is going to be pointing upwards just like this okay so let's go again select this start the normal editor and let's select all of these other uh, sections right here as you can see this needs some correction but anyways let's just let's just go and select it let me switch this off um, okay that's great we're going to be selecting all of that as you can see they are pointing to the uh, by the way you can move this click and grab now that you can see that little um, square it's very tedious it's um, best recommended that you place it somewhere down there or somewhere over here so that they will not interfere with whatever you're doing but it will get reset on every time you enter the add-on again that's annoying but something to bear with this free amazing tool because it's the only tool that we have and it's been derived from the ideas of the soft image uh, normal editing tools advanced normal editing tools that were created specifically for gear guilty gear yes you probably didn't know that little fact but the normal editing tools um, that you see in most of the videos that I have uh, shown you are referenced from that first test tool that was created by Mr. Um, I think his name is Junior C. Motomura, Christian, I think it's Chris, Chris or Chris, I don't remember, sorry, Junior C. Motomura, he's the guy that developed this along with another soft image user and they did this test, okay? so to test the tool anyways so let's continue and on this section of the of the face we want this normals to point down because we want the chain to receive a shadow and not a light remember that in this position the light is coming in straight in this 45 degree angle so we want to make sure that all of this is hit by the light in a 45 degree angle because we want to show that the area is flat we don't want to produce any shadows and the most secure way to do that is just to make sure that this is going to find the light, the path to the light. That sounded so philosophical. Anyways, three. And now let's just point them forward like we did before. And that is going to be negative Y. Okay, this is positive Y. I'm going to go negative Y. So negative Y is this way. Negative Y is what we're going to apply to align to the axis. And now, uh, now that all of the vectors are specifically pointing this way we want to rotate them like we did before in a incremental rotations on the x-axis this is the red circle this is the red axis so I think it was negative yeah here we go again you can see both clicks that I, my mouse did because it's glitchy so make sure that you have a very well working mouse again see two, two times no, we don't want two times, we only want one time. So that's a problem if you have a glitchy mouse. Okay, that looks like about right. And confirm your changes. So far you would think nothing has changed, but congratulations, you just edited your first facial region. So be proud of yourself. We're going to continue to do this with the other regions in a time lapse so you can see. And I'm going to be switching this to the matcap normals so there we go now you can see okay look how flat this area is please don't don't pay attention to this section because once the face is merged this is going to also be reset we need to do that but pay attention on how flat the light is right here you see that if I move the mask this all almost becomes like one single thing and this is the exact purpose of what we're doing we can already see the cat like facial features of this face because that is also important it's not only that it will make sense as the 2d drawing at the anime style but it also makes uh, topology sense on this Fantastic. So let's continue with the next section, which is so, which is going to be the nose. In this case, we can see that there are missing 
things that we need to build the first. Let me just switch this back to studio view. Uh, maybe so you can see it better. I should switch to I think it's single. Yeah, here we go. Single and just a tad. Yeah, so that way you can see it better. Yeah, I guess you can see the the, the notes. Okay, so you can see the nose here. Maybe what's optimal to do is to take this and make this one single triangle go all the way back here. Now, whenever you're working with triangles, you should um, make sure that you have two running lines for those triangles to obey your topology. Okay, so in my case, I need to trace another line here and make sure that this goes all the way down here. So let me just explain that with the with the um, with the annotation. So I'm going to be creating one new annotation, and this is going to be called nose triangles should be named differently but okay so you can see that the nose triangle is right here and then it goes down 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 here but normally what we would see is this kind of shadow in this side of the nose right so you can see my topology is wrong here so let's start with uh, with this simple example so that you can so that you can understand how to fix your topology because as you can see um, this section over here whoops this section over here okay it's a double double line but it ends up here and no we want that double line to go all the way over here and specifically turn around here so that we can have a nice uh, section that it's entirely shadowed later on okay I hope you're really taking notes on this because it's really important the way we model our our um, our triangles so I will just um, press F to fusion those triangles and, and then I'm going to select this edge. Let me get closer so you can see it. Then I'm going to select this edge. And anyways, I'm going to be selecting this edge. And what I want to do here is to uh, show you that you can change the directions of the edge. Okay, I'm going to select this edge, come to edge, and then rotate the edge counterclockwise to the left. Click. And you can see that it will automatically align this edge with this and that is our that is of our interest okay so that's how you rotate the edge why is this important because we want to rotate different edges for example let's do that again I'm going to be selecting this and now I want to change the trajectory of that edge so I'm going to rotate it again counterclockwise that's to the left and you can see how this region just switch its its um, shading okay so now I will continue to move this line or rather fix this because we need to pair this edge all the way to this edge. So let's just do that. I'm going to press K for the knife tool. I'm going to grab this and I don't care specifically what this is cutting. All I want to do is just to connect that point to this point. So click, left click and then press enter and then it will cut it. Perfect. So now I'm going to press 3 to select the faces. I'm going to select this 2 and then I'm, get, I'm going to press F. Let me see if I can activate the shortcuts so you can see them on the screencast, I guess. Yeah. PMP, I don't know. Okay. So I'm going to press 3. Yes, there we go. You can see them there. And fuse this to and now I'm going to press K and continue to do this line work over here now remember all of this it's going to be directly cut okay so let's make sure that it works as intended 
So now you can see that I have all of these with new normals and they are not following the previous normals that we have selected. So how do we do that? How do we select this region and make them copy from another previous normal? Let's start the BNPR normal editor. And the new normals that we created are all of these. So I'm going to be remember you select with right mouse button whenever you're on AB normal and switch off the overlay so that you will not get bothered by this move this out of the way shift right mouse click shift right mouse see the gizmo is on top so you cannot select that that's a shame you have to move your screen uh, to fix that and there is even a a point back there that it's not selectable and this one also it's back there and it's not selectable so that's a problem. Anyway, so we're going to select all of this and this is a vector that was previously corrected. But since this is the last selected vector, it becomes the active vector. So now you can come here to the copy and paste normals and we're going to copy the active, that is this one right here, to the selected ones. Those are these points over here. So if you click copy active to normal, then all of those points are going to copy this one right here and that's exactly what we wanted. Now confirm the changes. Let's enter into edit mode and let's activate the overlays. Let's find out by pressing 1 to vertex filter. Select this one. It said that there were two points floating in the ocean <laughs> that they do not want to work with this alignment that we did. No problem, I think it was this one. All of the others were correctly aligned. Look at this. This is aligned. This is aligned. Except this one. This one does. Um, it's not aligned. Or actually, it is. It is aligned. Nope, it's not. So I'm going to be showing you how you can do this on Blender with the normal, regular Blender tools. Mesh, normals, and then you have the entire menu as we mentioned before. So if you press Alt N, you will have the same menu. And what do we want with that vector specifically? We want to um, select this other one, Alt N, copy the vector position or vector direction, and then select this one, Alt N, and then paste the vector. And just like that, you've copied this direction onto this vector to get it this way. Okay, so that's what you do with the normal um, blender tool but the AB normals have the, have the most um, complete set of tools right there on the view without any hidden menus so let's continue now we want to change this we want to fuse that because we have an entire square one two three four this is a square and this works this is cool and now we have our nose running with one single one single edge flow look at that one this is the one that it's going to be get this is the one that it's going to be calculated and now we need a supporting that's what it's called a supporting um, vector a supporting line over here so whenever you have a tree uh, tree line or tree grid let me just draw it so you can see it uh, this is not topology corrected but anyways whenever you have tree one, two, three. Whenever you have three parallel lines like this, three parallel edges like this, your shadow is going to be defined on this middle section. That is all you really need to care to learn. That is all that's going to make the difference. It literally defines this issue as day and night, light and shadow, because this is where it's going to get spread out too. But it needs this main, we can say, coordinate to calculate the surface. So that's why we need parallel lines to make really sharp angles. And you can even sharpen them more that we will see um, in details ahead of this video. But you can sharpen them more by selecting them and coming here into the transforms, vertex data, and make them crease. When you make 100% crease, 
you're forcing the light to come until this point and then break the light after that point, after that edge. That's why we use crease in different sections of the body to even define or harsh the light up to this edge. Okay, I hope all of this information is useful to you. Now I want to disappear this edge at once. So what I usually do is press Ctrl X. Ctrl X will eat away Ctrl X directly an edge. Okay, Ctrl Z to undo. You can also see how it's changing already. Look at that. This section right here, it's kind of weird because uh, it's expecting another vector right here. So we're going to fix that. This is why it's called topology flow, because it needs to flow. Everything that you create, everything that you do needs to flow. And the one that we need to arrange or fix, it's all of these three triangles right here. I'm going to press F to fusion them all. But my supporting line, guess what? Guess what? It's right here. So I'm going to be picking that one, and then I'm going to be coming all the way up here. Press Enter, and now we have our perfect quad. One, two, three three four but it's uh, disjointed look at that it's, it's over there but we don't want that what we want to do is to move this all the way over here and you can already see how the light it's filling up it's um, it's uh, completing this and this is exactly what we want and it's happening exactly what I mentioned that it would happen I'm going to press GG to slide this it's uh, doing its um, main edge sharp light and now it's going to the supporting edge which is this one the limiting edge so we need to continue to fix this and I'm going to be moving this I'm just going to be creating this messy topology for now but again this will show you the things that you wanted to to see okay so we have a triangle here that is not correct. I'm going to be fuse, fuse, uh, fusioning that. And we have this weird issue. No problem. Let's just use this and cut this over here so that we can make this surface even flatter. Okay. But now we have a five, one, two, three, four, five polygon. And we don't want that. We never want that. So no problem, I'm going to be selecting this one and this one, and then I'm going to be pressing M to merge those points. The first one, it's going to be fusion or merge at the last one. That means that the point that was here was selected first, and this other one was selected last. That's why I press M, selection, to merge first to last. And that's how it moved. Okay, great. So now I have my supporting line and you can already see that this nose is it's having its uh, its dark shadow. But we have an issue here. We already know that, th that the topology is correct. But the problem that we have is that these two edges or these two points are not being averaged. And that's a problem because it's not only that, it's not only that, it's all of this. But as you can see, this is um, averaging between this point and this position over here that's why it's you know being drawn in an average from this position to this position so that's what we need to do on these points right here we want to select all of these select 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 or rather quickly select this one which which is the position that we need to to do alt n let's copy that vector and now let's paste them over here even to this one okay alt n and guess what paste vectors and they are all aligned now and you got rid of that problem so as you can see everything has to do with how the normal the normals are aligned in reality what you want to do is always to check your topology first and then check out your normal average your normal uh, direction now you can see that this is pointing forward, this is pointing forward, but this is, you know, uh, in the wrong position. So let's do this again with the Blender native tools. You can, of course, use AB normals for this, but I guess it's easier to do when everything is inside Blender as well. Even in the case that you cannot download AB normal, this is why I'm showing you these steps using the regular Blender tools. So select that one, Alt N. 
whoops, I'm sorry. First, select the one that you want to copy from, like this one, Alt N, copy vectors, and then select the one you want to paste them on. As you can see, there is a kind of a glitch here. I don't know if you can see it. It's very harsh. It's very problematic. So we want to select that, copy that vector, select that, Alt N, and then paste the vectors. And now that problem is gone. I have the same issue here. Look at that. It's not flat. It's it's got this uh, strange cross over here because the light is heating. It's trying to calculate between that edge and the other edge, and between that vertex and that vertex. It's a problem. So let's just select the the one below, right there. Alt N, copy the vectors, and then select the one that it's messed up, which is this one. Alt N, and then paste the vectors. And just like that, it's been fixed. And now you can see how sharp this is, how how cool that is. You can move your mouse, you can move your subject, and you can see the transition going from this all the way to this. And then you would you would ask, then then what do we do with this? Where should the where should the, the supporting edge for the light be placed at? Should we place it over here? Should we place it over here? Should we place it, I don't know, somewhere around here and make a third, I'm sorry, make a fourth supporting edge until it comes down all the way down to the nose? Yeah, maybe you can. But the flatter you make the surface, the better. In reality, what we should be looking forward to is to mesh or mix these two, these two surfaces. So it would be a complete snap from here to here as you can see right here. So that would mean that would mean I will need to fuse these two together as well and all of these points together as well and all of these points together as well and all of these points together as well and that will bring me to this connection. You can see how one decision affects just like a puzzle every other decision that it's down below but it's unarguably uh, the best decision because you can see that the the topology changes so nice from here to here in regards of light and that is exactly when we what we want to do we want to have a sharp cut between the light over here and the shadow over here and so you can see that and you can see that so I will leave it to your decision to do whatever you deem right in this uh, section but um let me see if we can, you know, just directly do this, although I don't think it will work, but let's see. You can see it right away. It's not working because this light is spreading onto this other side. So this is where it becomes useful to select the edge and make it turn clockwise. So let's go to edge, rotate the edge clockwise, and it will snap onto the other one and it says okay the next vertex I have available is this one so it jumps from here to here and let's see how the the nose reacts mm, yeah I don't see it that bad either but it's most definitely we don't want this here so I'm going to just leave this over here leave that over there leave that over there and in order for you to get rid of this lonely vertex you can select those two press x press s because we want to dissolve the vertices so x and the shortcut s this yeah let's fuse this and now they are really alone so x and then s here we go all right so you can see now this is like uh mind opening you can see where your squares should be at whoops no we don't want that we don't want that and the reason we don't want that is because we want this to be a straight shade as it is right there so now you can see how you can create a transitional area which is all of this this is where your vertex is pointing in the average this is what it's going to make a soft transition from the light from this side to this side and then you have the harsh or rather the straight um, modify normal we are going to be modifying this even more because what we want is that whenever the light is hitting this way all of these normals are already um, giving its own back like turning around from the 
main vector direction of the light. But first we need to make sure that the topology is working. So here we have spotted another problem. Look at that. So I'm going to be merging this at the center so that it will make this as an average. This zone right here is very conflictive because you can see there are there are points that do not match. So let's make them match. I'm going to click here, click here, enter. And now they will match because I have a transitional zone between this one. I don't know if you can see it. Let me just highlight it. See? And the transitional zone will be right here. But I want this to be a support over here. As you can see, the light hits and it tried to bend over here without support, the support edge. So if I create a support edge there, look how the light continues to spread the down. And this is not what we want. So Ctrl Z and just leave it like that. The most likely scenario is to make this cut over here. Whoops. And see what happened? Now it needs another supporting line over here. <laughs> I'm just going to call them supporting lines because it's a cool name. Um, and it needs a, also another support line down here. So yeah, this is this is why you need to really uh, separate your mind from just good workflow topology alone. GG to slide them. Uh, GG to slide it, GG to slide it, right? Because you need to see what is working with this topology and what is not supporting. And once you fix that, you need to fix it also at the normal levels. Then you need to do the support lines like this, like we're doing, because you're seeing the results right here in the light. They're not going to be working. And this is uh, a problem because we only have this transitional region and this transitional region gets broken here. So let's just fix that. And the problem as you can see it's a badly distributed normal. So I'm going to be copying this one and pasting it over here. So Alt N, copy the vectors. Alt select this other one, this one right here. Alt N, paste vectors. Okay, that kind of looks good. It kind of works. Look at that. This transitional zone doesn't matter. Maybe what we can do is to make it closer so that the light, you know, really hits home. GG to slide. Press this one. Yeah, distribute it just like that. Also bear in mind that whatever you do with these vectors, you always need to be aligned to the type of zone or type of light that you're using as you remember we're using the light in this way I mentioned before that uh, you need to set your light in the way that you're going to model this entire thing so this is why it is important to to do it this way okay so that's that and I get good support there now we have another problem here look at that vector it's crossed over there this one is also crossed over there so let's just copy this one alt n copy the vectors I'm going to be pasting this one over here and this one over here out and paste vectors and that is fixed switch off the overlays and now you have this clean defined region for the dark area of the nose and look at that you can already see the results just wonderful now if you notice from distance this will work this will work exactly as you mean it to work please remember that we have only worked on this section of the face and this section of the nose now we need to complete this section of the the face as well and you can see that there there is an issue down here but for most of what we have already done this is already flat look how flat it is the light is expecting to receive this um, surface okay uh, light distribution this distribution of the light in this surface which is what I mean and it works correctly look at that thank you so much if you have been uh, watching this video up to this section because again this is something that you really need to master and in order for it to master there are different tools that all together need to be combined again this is just like driving your car if you have a car or this is just like uh, uh, doing 
uh, recipe, you know, you need to put the ingredients first in a specific order so that everything else will join and mix uh, accordingly. So 3D is it's very easy when you know how to mix them in the order to mix them, by the way, um, to mix the tools, the appropriate tools. But if you do not know, obviously this becomes very tedious, very difficult, very cryptic, and we don't want, we don't want that. What we want to do is to do a good job with the things that we do. Okay, so what I'm doing here is to align my my vertices on this side of the nose and remember please remember whenever you're working in this you don't want to work with the two sides of the faces all at once no what you want to do is to work with a single side of the face using a mirror modifier okay that's what you want to do now what I'm doing here maybe I should just uh, okay no um, so let me just switch off momentarily those normals so what I'm doing here is making sure that the edge flow um, is working very smoothly. See this? This is harsh. It stops there, it downs here, it stops here, down. No, we need to make this a semi-rounded, um, semi-rounded, how we call this? Uh, whoops, semi-rounded, yeah, that's, that's correct, semi-rounded um, flow. I'm going to be putting this up here and you can notice how the light is changing so make sure that you're also going to arrange that okay so now you have something even look at that that there is a solo vertex so select it and then press X and then S to dissolve it whenever a vertex is all alone you can do that operation without a problem so what you're seeing right here is me correcting and trying to make more coplanar coplanar surfaces of course we are not perfect and this is where the sculpting tools enter now we're going to fix this area that is also horrible we have created our supporting line right here vertex all the way over here this one is not looking good we need to fix this zone as well uh, but I'll worry about that later. We're almost in the hour, so this is important that you watch and how to, to do this. Alright, so there we go. It flows nicely. But you can see that there is an issue there. It's not completely perfect. So how can we flatten this even better? I'm going to be saving this version now. Press Tab go to sculpt mode and we have a nice awesome tool which is called flatten see that um, see that um, brush that sculpting brush is allowing us to flat 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 click 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 flat this surface as much as we can let's press F for the size and I want to flat all of this even better and you can see how flat it is depending on the position look at that much better much much better flat 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 okay and if you press shift you're going to soften that flat but in order to make that brush work well which is a smooth brush smooth brush click on the smooth brush and set the strength all the way down here to 0 0.075 otherwise if you have it all the way up here it's going to slide your vertex too much 0 0.75 0 .75. and now I'm going to go back into flatten but then I'm going to press shift the shift letter will allow me to flatten it and soften it isn't that great and remember all of this that you're doing you're also doing it to the other side perfect this is just perfect why did I want to concentrate my um, my editing right here Oops. let's go to the object mode edit mode because I see that there are a lot of fans for Dragon Ball Z noses and this is just a kind of Dragon Ball Z nose shadow topology that you would like to to practice on your model now I know there are a lot of people who download uh, 
the game's models, and they, they just use it so that they can animate, you know, their fan series and stuff. I'm not saying that's wrong, you know, it's, it's, your, it's your approach, it's your artistic, um, it's your artistic choice, that's great, but I'm showing you why this is taking, why this usually takes a lot of work. Because sometimes people think that, you know, well, you can do that faster. No, you can't. It's just like everything in 3D. Everything in 3D needs to have its own time dedication, its own resources, its own, um, how can we say it, its own time to cook, <laughs> time to develop. So never be ashamed of someone who's pushing you with your, your, with your times. Always mention that you want the the best end result and of course there has to be a measure between what's reasonable and what's un unreasonable when delivering your works or when delivering your models but you know realistic expectations are these kind of times and that's why I did not edit this video at all uh, you're watching this in real time so you can see what's going on What I like about this approach is that you can directly see how this line is working. Now, please notice, if I grab this, uh, um, you will notice that if you want a really sharp line here, we need to make a support line. Okay, we need to make a support line all the way over here. And that will create a really, really sharp transition between the nose and the, the eye. Okay. You can already see what zones need to be adjusted because the light it's conforming to that to that um, it's conforming to that topology and of course you can also modify the normals so before you go crazy always always adjust your topology first and then you know the rest is up to the normal because I understand creating a baking cake can be tedious. You don't know what to mix first. I understand driving a car for the first time is going to be tedious. You don't know which pedal is going to do what at what time. How do you do you know, your thing if you're driving a mechanical car? If you're driving an automatic car, you also need to know how to switch your gears uh, whenever possible. So if you're going to go retro, parking, you know, if you're going to drive in a U-turn, I mean, come on. There are a lot of complex things in life, but when you learn with a good instruction, then you will not have that kind of issue. So I'm going to be just pressing GG and then R to rotate this because we want to make a mask. Oh, the mask issue is going to be another important subject, but for now, as you can see, I have taken my time. This probably would have taken me around 20 minutes to edit, but now you have a perfect edited um, shape for your shadows and your support of the shadows on the nose. By the way, let's fix this mess that we have down here. It's really, uh, it's really bad. And then we'll end up this session. So um, I'll be continuing this. And my support line is right here. I can see it. So this one is going to be right here. Right here. Right here. All the way over here. Remember this is a normal thing. Um, a normal edit. That's what I meant. And whenever I have these conflicting zones like this. It's just too tedious to guess where my supporting line should go to. And it's, I don't know, it's, it's, it's really messy. So what I tend to do is just to mix it all. So I'm going to select everything right here. And then I'm going to press F. With all of that selected and mixed. Now I can see clearly what needs to happen. All of these things are important. So my supporting line, it's right here. When I mean supporting line, let me just draw it so you can see it. Um... When I mean supporting line, I mean something that back, backs up or defines, or rather um, makes the line solid. Let me draw this with a red line so you can see it, or rather yellow line so you can see it. Okay, look at this. 
Line one, main line. Whoops, what happened? Line one, oop. I don't know what's going on. Let's go to edit mode. Again, let's try the let's try it there. Line one. No. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Maybe oh because that that's a color that's hidden. Let's go with pink. Line one. Um this is surely glitching. Let's go with surface. Maybe that's uh that's a thing. Oh gosh. This glitching mouse, this glitching mouse. Sorry, sorry guys. Okay, let's see. Much better. So this is line number one, line number two, and you guessed it, we're missing line number three, which can be traced all the way over here. So that's line number one, line number two, line number three. Let's switch to orange so you can see the other ones. And again, we have line number one, it goes all the way up. This should be line number two, it's going all the way up. And, whoops, <laughs> it's doing all kind of glitchy things. Anyways, and this is line number three, see? Perfect, so now you know how the line should be combined. So let's do that. Um, Thank you so much for your patience. I really appreciate it. And we are about to finish this by defining these regions. So again, I'm going to be picking this over here. Whoops, not that one, sorry. And we have to see this. We can mix them merge them at center select that one select this other one and press m mix at center the mouse is really glitching now <laughs> sorry guys i don't know what's going on with my mouse it's a gamer mouse you know with those dpi thing configurations and it's really annoying and let's go over here there we go that means we have more transitions from here to here because if this is the main line and this other one is the main line everything in between will help transition so now you can see that this will correctly adjust here and I'm, and I'm going to show you one nifty trick right now I've been willing to show you this from the beginning of this lesson but now you're going to see it in action and it's much better let's get this whoops sorry sorry guys glitching mouse so let's select this one XS and it's been deleted. So now you can see that the entire nose comes all the way to this point and then it turns around on this point. So let's just, you know, put this down here so we can make this better. You can see that we have a problem here. First of all, it's the normal things. And second of all, it's a, it's a topology thing. So, Mr. Schiller, this is really messy. I really don't like how the light is working in all of these zones. I'm, I'm totally lost. Can we fix this? Yes, let's fix this. I'm going to be creating this over here so we can make this a square as it should be. And now you can see the correct transition going in this let me mark it so you can see it. Square, 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 square. See that? That's good. Okay, so that's how we're going to work. But now we need to reset all of these vectors. So I'm going to be selecting all of this, all of this, because right now it's really messy. All of this, all of this, all of this, all of this. Okay, press Alt N and then set reset vectors. And that will give you a smooth result, smoother result. But it is not working with the normals that we we mentioned that this should be working. And also let me mention that this middle zone right here, it's having a problem because we have not merged the mask yet. We are not going to be um, merging that part all until the very end. And when we do, we will fix those things. There are not many many points there so it's not really a big deal 
but our nose it's looking much better so let's go back to edit mode and let's uh, redo or fix all of these things so again we're making sure that all of the, our topology fits in the best way possible that is smooth according to our character and by the way guys I'm planning to do a Felicia you know dark stalker style um, I'm planning to do a Felicia for uh, to practice this kind of things on that kind of topology I'm going to be creating the cat using this because I really want to see how Capcom would look after all these years if they were applying you know the Marvel vs Capcom techniques onto Guilty Gear style models that would be a total wholesome thing and this is why I really want to thank you that you're taking the time to learn all of these tools all of these things all of these tricks with this training course thank you so much for your support okay so let's ba bring back the normals normals there we go oh my goodness so we have a lot of work to do here so the first thing is to define where do we want our lights and where do we want our shadows this is going to be our transition area you know these are going to be harsh normals harsh harsh normals and this is going to be like average normals which is what we're going to address in this in this moment so let me just you know, do this over here so we can see those um, transitions in a little bit yeah there we go so when the light transitions on this area it's going to do this uh, soft transition from here to here but all of these other areas right here are going to need also to be averaged and this one is also going to be averaged and starting from this phase downwards it's going to go specifically down okay so this area right here is going to be definitely down down so make sure that it doesn't look like a square because remember you're going to get what you see on your topology this is why in your topology you need to model your shadows you need to model what you want to see in your final um, real time editing normals is a common thing in the CG industry so I'm really happy that you picked this course, you are watching this video, in the case that you are, up to this point, so that you can learn all of these things. Again, I have not edited this, I have not time-lapsed this, so that you can see how it is done. So right now, I'm working with the, with the topology, and it's clear to me that we need to draw one, one, um, one edge all the way down here so that it will make sense and we will get rid of these two triangles and then we fusion those two now Mr. Schiller why is it important that some areas are defined with triangles and some other areas are defined with squares with polygon squares and the answer is very simple you if you really want sharp uh, edges like this one you're going to have to create the supporting line so I have created this uh, first edge second edge right here that it stops here and then this one it's also a third edge so I want this area to be really sharp but it wouldn't be sharp if I don't create those support edges so that's why you're trying to model all of these things uh, really close really parallel so that the light hits the first one which is this one in reality it hits everything but if if the application detects a parallel line it will try to spread it will try to divide it will try to um, yeah spreads the best word I can I can find it's going to spread the light evenly and that makes our surface look flat and that is that is what we want so the next function I want to show you is to grab all of these, uh, switch to vertex selection, Alt N, and then I'm going to say average. And what do I want to average? 
I want the normals to average their surrounding neighbors. So I want to make this as a face area. And what it's what that's going to do is going to try to look at the neighbor down here and the neighbor down here and set these points into an average for him and for him. Okay? That that's what it has done already. Okay, that's good. If you notice all of this all of these vertices are going to be the, the transition zone from the top down. So that tells us that we need to move this just a little bit back down here. Rotate. And we should do the same with all of this. Yeah, there we go. Now we can see a much better transition area for the nose. Okay. Again, this has taken me a lot of time because I'm commenting this. Because you need to know this. But if I was to do this, this would be really fast, really, really fast, like 20, 30 minutes workflow. But you really, really need to look at this and understand what kind of edge flow we are doing, we are working with. See that? And it breaks here. So maybe we should break it even before coming here so that these two points will, you know, merge between each other but that's something that we will do later on for now I only want to finish this section and correct the normal so you can see all this has all this hard work paying off Alright, guess that's it. Um, let's hide the normals to see how we're doing. Okay, not bad. But I guess some some of these um, points are very harsh. Now another thing I wanted to su I wanted to suggest to you is that whenever you're working with these things or these files, always, 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 please, please, please try to work with a uh, concept drawing. You really need to have a concept drawing if you want your meshes, if you want your files, if you want your designs to work in the way you intend them, them to work. And that is to say that you um, can define your shapes in paper so that when you're doing them in the 3D application they will work as you want them to. For me, this is just like a game, you know, we need to find the triangle and make it square or we need to find a square and make it triangle. And it's a game that it will not end until you complete your model or until you create that shape. Now, the more you practice, the more you're going to get good at this. There's no way you can get this all at once at the first try. Unless, of course, you are really studying a lot of topology. You are already an experienced modeler and you already know how to do these things. And that will be awesome because then you will adapt your volumes, your sharp edges, your strokes, your pencil strokes to the kind of... Um, to the kind of topology th that you will be doing and that is great if you have such experience I, I'll guarantee you're, you're going to be uh, you're going to be excelling at doing this everything is important when you have an artistic background 2D background is what I mean everything concerning shapes everything concerning strokes everything concerning uh, flow everything concerning uh, how do you call this uh, there's a rule 
um, I don't quite remember the name now, but that rule says that whenever you have a, a, a um, hard edge like it like this, you need to have something flowy on the contrary. It's like the contrast thing. If you have something sharp on one side, you need to make it flow on the other side, and that's what makes it appealing. That's what makes it uh, graceful. That's what makes it uh, beautiful to watch. This zone is kind of, kind of complex right now, but I'm not worried about that. I'm just worried about the making the edge flow go as naturally as it can. Although the obvious thing will do will be to create a second line here, but that is going to create a lot of problems. So I'm trying to pick where I should, you know, just do this sharp angle. And I'm going to leave it there because if I lower it down here, it's going to create a low shadow that I'm not interested in this in it. But in this way, it's going to create a sharp shadow down here, and then it's going to go flowing all the way over there. And that's what I I'm most interested in whoops look at this so when you have this kind of problems that your topology is too too uh, hollowed and you really need to average this you can go back to the sculpt mode and just press shift and that is going to help you um, press G for example to grab you can also do this with proportional tools press shift so that you can um, soften this thing and notice how dangerous sometimes it is to to draw your your anatomy your your um, your edges because they will be merged by the mirror modifier and right now this looks good this looks great so let's just soften this just a tad F shift F to define how um, hard this thing's gonna be and press G. There is also this um, slide relax, which also works well. All right, so yeah, slide relax will average your points. Again, just look at the topology. Don't look at the, the don't look at the normals right now. Just look at the topology flow, the edges flow. We're going to be fixing topology in just a second, but I'm sorry, the normals in just a second, but it is important that you finish your topology first. Don't get discouraged and also don't get rushed. Okay. If you, if you're skipping uh, time with forward, you can also watch this process go a little bit faster. Yeah, see, see, it will naturally, I want to show you this because this is important. It will naturally will want, oh, come on. What happened now? This will naturally want to flow. Oh, sorry, sorry, glitchy mouse. I'm sorry. Oh, come on. See this, this is the main line, okay? Main line right there, good. Supporting line number one. 
and it diverts all the way over here. Supporting line number two, it goes here and then it sticks there. No, what we should do is to make this come all the way over here and follow this entire thing. And what we should do is to continue to follow all of this all the way over here. But since we're creating kind of like a mask, uh, our efforts should be concentrated in closing this gap and creating the mask from up here all the way over here like this. Okay, but we will address that zone of the face in other videos. For now, let's just finish this. And what I'm going to do now is to mix this so that we will only get one line because we already have enough lines under the nose to make the support line. Watch this. This is the main one. Great. This is the support number one. And this is the support number two. And of course, this goes all the way over here. Okay. So that's a loop, what it's called a loop. So make sure that you do your uh, geometry loops accordingly. Oh my goodness, this glitchy mouse. XS. All right, so we have it. Great. We do not need to do this. So frame F. Sorry, press F, and that will mix those two together. Okay. So well, I think we're done. Let's um, complete this section, and then we will do the normal editing. By now, you should have learned all of the normal editing tools, and as you can see, they are not difficult. You only need to know how to invoke them and how to use them, and you already have done that, so I'm most confident that you will know how to manipulate this. Fantastic, look at that, this is a great looking nose. <laughs> um, when we create the mask, we're going to have all of this shift. We're going to shift all of that so that it will flow onto this side. So now that you know that topology is important, but independently of how you model your topology, you can continue to further manipulate your normals and give the appearance you want. You may probably be wondering, what's the use of aligning so many vertices if at the end I can just copy the correct normal pointing vertex and copy them copy it to all of the others and you're right in a sense but you really want a clean topology because you're a professional you don't want to see your models being exported to another another engine or another application which will not recognize those normals and then look in that how bad that topology is this is why we take time, we take care, we um, make sure that all we are doing here looks good here and looks good outside. Okay, I think we need to stop because otherwise it's going to take me a lot of time. Uh, and I guess we have already used all of the available time. But I guess you get the idea. You need to make sure that everything just flows naturally, that it looks good, that it looks um, very organic, even though it has this limiting factor. But it's going to work. In the end, it's going to work. And I hope this has helped you a lot. I'm going to press C, I'm going to select all of this right there, and then I'm going to press 1 to get to the vertex, Alt N, and then reset all the vectors. Okay, so with all of those vectors reset, you can see that the mouth um, and the nose are taking its normal, um, its normal presentations for that. So let's just finish editing. And let me see if this can be done right here so just like we mentioned all of these normals are going to be pointing this way all of these normals are going to be pointing this way and all of these normals are going to be pointing to the light so they are going to be pointing 
kind of upward like this okay and the middle zone is going to have you know both this and this let me just draw that little arrows <laughs> this 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 and this this is important this this transition zone is very important and this is going to be pointing forward so you can see all of the work that needs to be done here fantastic so let's just do that it's a relief that we can just work in one zone at a time isn't it okay so that looks good we're going to come all the way over there yes indeed and let's go to the a b normals okay let's go to the front view because this is what we want to change start the normal editor and as you can see my my um, vertices have been already selected let's just present this and since we already mentioned that zone that we just defined it's going to be pointing towards positive x. Look at this, positive x. So let's just align to axis positive x. Fantastic, that's great. Now let's just grab the down part right here. This, oops, let me switch this off. Oh, confirm changes, <laughs> never forget to confirm changes because you already know how it is confirm the changes so let's go here let me just um, press C to get the the um, circle selection all of this is going to point downwards downwards right right shift right mouse to unselect shift right mouse to unselect shift right mouse to unselect okay so now I have this lower part of the nose and that is going to point downward so I'm going to press 3 and now I'm going to press I'm going to select the minus Z positive Z is up so negative Z is going to be down so align to axis negative Z there's no mystery here I mean it's really easy once you get uh, once you understand how the concept works I'm going to be selecting this one and here comes the moment where you want to uh, average you can see that this is really broken down and you can see a harsh dark line but if we align this in an average just like this one then it can appear kind of better better so we want to do this for this one because we want to average all of this so we can have a transition here from here and it's uh, much softer so we are going to do this over there very good and now um, right mouse click on this one shift right mouse click shift right mouse click shift um, I guess the last one not okay just these two and then select this one as the last one okay and then just copy active normals to select it and now it's more average this one on the contrary we also need to manipulate it so we're going to grab it and you can see that we're going to move it over here we need to make an average between this dark zone and this zone this is pointing this way and this one is pointing downwards so it's most obvious that we need to point it this way so turn your view so that you can see it clearly we want to make this over here good and we want to make this up front good okay much better uh, like I mentioned before don't worry about this one because this one it's not um, merged the moment that it's merged we have to fix a lot of issues that are shown there okay so this is a great transition so you can see how the average between this uh, sharp one and this sharp one is this one right here okay good let's see on this side yeah I guess it's gonna work it's gonna work maybe this one ah that's why let's rotate it just a tad it's important so that we can okay just a little bit down you can see that the, the drawing um, the drawing 
pencil because that was my last tool outside. I'm going to be grabbing this one and grabbing this one and also going to make them average like that. Okay, great. Great, great, great. It's looking good. So we have a lot of transitions here, like from this point to this point. Maybe this one we should... Oh no, I guess it's it's good. It's great. Okay. Okay. Look at this. This is also a great transition, but not for, for these guys. So we need to fix that. So let's select all of these guys. All of these guys. Maybe even up to this point. And let's select this one as the last one. And then copy active normals to select it. There we go. Look at that. It's much better. Okay, great. Fantastic. Confirm changes. Please, if you press escape or you press tab, you will lose everything you have done. So please click on confirm changes so that you can have your face here. Now, let me save an alternative file so that you will not miss this. This is A, B. Okay. And what I want to do now is to um, kind of join, but it will tell me, you know what, you have shape keys. You cannot join this side of the face with this other side of the face unless you get rid of all these shape keys. There's an add-on to merge both, uh, to apply, sorry, this modifier, uh, but I'm not going to be using it right here. Just so that you know, there is an add-on that does that. It will apply your modifier. It will apply your modifier, but will maintain your shape keys. Okay, I'm not going. I'm not going to worry about the mask now. In the end, and this is something I want to uh, mention before we go. In the end, I'm going to be cutting and separating all the different parts of the face, so that you can see that each structure can be worked one at a time and later on it can be joined all together and it will still work as one single facial mesh and that's the wonder about this that once you learn this method you can go forward in time and imagine your uh, facial mask as different structures or you can go backwards in time and you can start re-editing the, the edge flows so that you can cut them in the future it's a really important technique and this is why this entire section 5 is going to be dedicated to this kind of workflows. Thank you very much and we're going to continue this in the next video. See that? Much better. Look at this. We only work in this section and in the front version and it's already looking pretty amazing. Let me get this rid of. Look at that. See? And if I apply a two subdivision modifier, <laughs> look at that, even cleaner. We have not got, gotten to the part of the mouth, so please don't pay attention to that. We're only talking about the nose. Look at that, looks nice. You're going to see all this work finished and completed by the end of the series, by the end of this training. But right now, this is just outstanding. And the fact that we're going to be fixing this live. I'm not going to be editing nor cutting. I really want you to watch this entire process from beginning to end so that you can also work with all of your custom characters and create amazing things. In addition, we have completed this model 
by simply editing the front and the nose, the front of the head and just the nose. We have other areas to cover in the future. So as you can see here, we start with the face default normals, which is the best polygonal model version that you can make, okay? So that's important. Please notice that we have also used the Guilty Gear approach style in this face and the mouth and also the cheeks. So we are going to be talking about this in a future video. But for now, please consider creating your anime mesh with this reference. Next, we are going to divide different uh, stages, this different sections on the face so that we can focus on one section at the time. Okay, so that's what face B is. But instead of creating the entire face, you know, each one side independently, we're going to be creating just the half of the face. We're only going to modify and edit the normals in just one side of the face, but we're going to actively have the mirror modifier on this side of the face so that we can get the same results on the other side of the face automatically mirrored. So if I switch this off, you can see this is only half of the face, and that's how we did our work. In the next step, we have the sections itself. And for this example, we created just the front part of the forehead plus the sides of the nose. And we edited those things, and that is what we see here. But we still have other areas to cover. Now let's also not forget that these middle areas right here are called transitional um, areas. This is where we're going to break our normals to make this shade much smoother and avoid the snapping whenever we're rotating the light. If we do not create these intermediate sections, we're going to see a snap from this side bam, onto this other side, and we don't want that. We always want to make transitional areas by subdividing um, the parallel edges we have from one side onto the other side, okay? And we also modeled the nose in the best way possible so that we can get the appearance that we wanted from the shadow. So I'm going to get close here. And as you can see, this is what we modeled. I made a little mistake. This should be all together. And as you can see, the edge flow corresponds to that of the nose. And we also corrected the nose normals. If I select this, and then I go to, I think it's this stage, and here we go, normals. You can see that my normals there are kind of, kind of averaged. There are some normals that still need work, like this one in the example. And let's not forget that we use number three, we use the normal editor, and we also copied the normals by selecting one with the native tools alt n copy vectors come here alt n paste vectors and that's how we averaged uh, normal vectors from uh, the native tools that blender have now you can see that all of this is uh, alone on the average and this is what we're going to be working on the next videos you can see that this is going down, this one is going up, when in reality all of these nodes should be going up. So let's do that. I'm going to copy that vector, Alt-N, copy vector, Alt-N, paste vectors. And the same way over here, Alt-N, copy vectors, Alt-N, paste vectors. And just like that we have a much ver better average. Let's do that for this section as well. Alt N copy vectors, Alt N paste vectors, Alt N copy vectors, this one right here, Alt N paste vectors. And just like that, this has also been average. But, but why do we get this? We get this because we broke the model surface that we had right here from the rest of the faces. And when they do not have an average normal, 
the real normal shows up. And that is why it's very important to create sections because once we finish this, we can join them all together, but we will not average when this vertex joins this other vertex back here. I'm sorry, let me bring the tools to right. Whoops. When this joins this, you're going to have the normal like this and this one other one like this. And when they join, they are going to average themselves automatically. They will I'm sorry, I cannot write right now. But anyways, they will average right here and you don't want that. You want this section to keep its normal and when you merge and join this part of the mesh, you want to stay with that kind of normal without joining and this also this vertex point will also have to remain in that way without averaging the normals and this is why we are working this step by step this is something that you will not find it explained anywhere else no matter how hard you look because this is something that you need to learn as you go modeling along so in this case we have created just the nose the front and that's it we're mirroring it mirror in we're mirroring it so that we can get this kind of appearance and right here we have face D which has the average face normals already with the applied uh, shading and as you can see that nose is looking amazing there look at that it's a it's, it's a very good uh, shade shape because you have modeled that shape in look at this now we're not getting very good results back here because we still need to work on this topology but nevertheless this one right here it's looking great if we add another loop right here it will define this shape even more and it looks like it ha it's having troubles over here and this is why it's important to create the concept art how is the concept art going to work for the shadows in this space it doesn't matter because we're doing this uh, based off at any regular cat character face and in the next videos we will continue to cover the rest of the areas such as the cheeks the rest of the forehead the mouth itself the side of the face and the back of the face as you can see it right here but i think in this um in this breakdown you can see where we are going to be working the major areas because later on we will work in other details such as the top eyelids the underlids the chin the lower part of the lip the uh in this uh section here the chin as well as other uh sections in the face so thank you very much for your support i hope this really 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 clarifies how you're going to transform edit or modify your normals in the case that you want to keep ahead of the game you can just reactivate all of the arrows that i have right here for you so that you can consider working on your own and try to manipulate the normals as they are pointing here for example this under lid area is going to be uh, manipulated to look or rather to point downwards this one is going to point point outwards like this the 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 mouth is going to be pointing upwards towards the light and almost to the front and you will see that the topology as well as the normal editing will help a lot on this basic really basic model so thank you very much for your support once again it really I really appreciate it. It means a lot because um, I am doing this entire series so that you will have the knowledge on how to work ma and manipulate your own models. Thank you very much.